Fossil fuels don't disappear overnight. Uh, in the you know, two degrees trajectory that describes the transition uh, to a low carbon energy system, uh, coal demand declines very significantly. Uh, oil demand peaks around 2020 and then it declines by, our half, by around half a million barrels per day. And in a two degrees trajectory, our modeling shows around 150 million electric cars by 2030 uh, contributing to the decarbonization uh, of this uh, transportation system. But a very significant proportion of global oil demand is represented by heavy duty transportation and the petrochemicals industry, which are extremely difficult or impossible uh, to electrify. So you have a, a sizable oil industry for still decades to go. Uh, in fact, uh, the oil demand decline in a two degrees trajectory is slower than the natural depletion uh, of the existing oil production. So you need to drill for some new production, uh, even in a two degrees, two degrees trajectory. Whereas in the case of natural gas, the natural gas has a lower carbon, carbon intensity than either uh, coal or uh, oil. So consequently, why uh, global natural gas demand is significantly lower than it would be for a high carbon trajectory, still there is a large size gas industry uh, in the world economy, providing uh, flexibility in the power system uh, uh, by gas turbines to electricity generation, which is dominated by wind and solar power, and also providing feedstock for petrochemicals uh, and the fertilizer industry. So, so, this, so we are not talking about wiping out uh, the industry one day to another, but the industry has to acknowledge that for a two degrees uh, climate stabilization, we have a carbon budget of roughly 1,000 billion tons. Now, if you believe that we will have a 100 billion tons carbon capture and storage, which I don't, uh, then you could add another 100, but that doesn't really change the big picture. So there is a mathematical limit of how much uh, fossil fuels we can burn from today until the end of time. And of course, if you go significantly beyond two, which was the Paris uh, uh, ambition, then the carbon budget decreases non-linearly. So from moving from two degrees to 1.5 degrees is not a simple switch. Uh, it's a highly non-linear change in cutting the carbon budget further. And this is something that the industry has to acknowledge and has to incorporate into its investment strategy. And from your observations and conversations with fossil fuel companies, do you think they're ready to accept these changes? Uh, I think the, the question is, is not easy to answer with a simple yes or no, mm -hmm. because this is a very large and very broad uh, industry. Uh, and the, the industry attitudes shift uh, and change from, let's say, outright climate skepticism uh, to a strong acknowledgement and credible investment programs into low carbon energy. So there are some, uh, there are some bad examples and there are some, uh, some good examples. Uh, I, think the, I think there is an increasing appreciation uh, in the industry about the, the importance of the increasing investment momentum and improving cost efficiency of renewables. Now, the oil and gas industry was betting heavily on large uh, LNG projects, especially in Australia, uh, which were quite difficult to build, and by the time they came online, uh, wind and solar power in uh, many importing countries, including Brazil and India, is actually cheaper than burning the importing LNG. I think this was this was an experience that was very uh, very much noted uh, in the industry. Uh, and I think also while electric car cars are roughly 10 years behind uh, wind and solar power in terms of deployment and technology development, still electric car technology is also uh, gathering momentum. Uh, electric cars uh, increasing the capture, the consumer's imagination. Uh, and I think that uh, a future in which electric cars will play a much higher role uh, than today, that is, in, that is also increasing the feeding uh, into, the, into the industry's expectations. And you mentioned that the IEA had overestimated the cost of renewables and underestimated their progress. Do you think the IEA needs to change? Well, that was a response. That was mm -hmm. a response to the, you know, as you recall in the panel, the, some uh, colleagues from the fossil fuel industry believed uh, be, believed that the IEA is too optimistic on renewables. Uh, I, I, I think that I, I think uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, the future is unpredictable. So the uh, so, so as new information, new technology developments, new uh, policy measures uh, come in, you revise your uh, projection, you change your mind. Uh, the, uh, in, the case, uh, in the case of renewables, uh, wind and solar power, that's uh, where the big changes happened. Uh, so in the past decade, 
uh, the revisions were, were progressively on the more optimistic side. However, you know, you go back in time, let's say 2005, when it was Mr. Dick Cheney who was running U.S. energy policy, uh, solar was in its technological infancy. On the base of the information which was available in 2005, that's a completely different set of expectations. Uh, the, uh, so so I, I, I think the, the, uh, the technological op- uh, outlook uh, and the investment outlook for wind and solar has certainly uh, uh, changed for the better. Uh, and certainly the, you know, the, the, re- the uh, latest expectations and the latest uh, modeling shows a progressively higher role for wind and solar uh, compared to other technologies. And just one more question, if I may. Um, how much of a threat do you think Brexit is to decarbonisation? Well, uh, the, uh, is, uh, we don't we, we, we don't we don't know uh, we, we don't know how uh, uh, Brexit, if it happens, uh, would affect UK government policies. I mean, currently, the United Kingdom has a very strong Climate Change Act, uh, which sets the institutional framework uh, for decarbonisation. And uh, the United Kingdom, in the past couple of years, have been a quite uh, significant investor into various uh, low carbon energy sources. Uh, I mean, that's we very much hope that that will uh, certainly remain to be the case.